Welcome back. Our statement reads, a sphere of radius r carries a polarization capital P of r equals kr, where k is a constant and r is the vector from the center. A. Calculate the bound charges sigma b and rho b. B. Find the field inside and outside the sphere. Things to know for this problem. The surface bound charge is sigma b equal to polarization dotted with the normal vector. The volume bound charge is the negative divergence of the polarization. So the solution for part a is pretty simple, but we have to take care of some annoying math stuff. For the surface bound charge, we know that we have the vector r, but it's a dot product with r hat. How do we get r hat from r? Well, that's just the magnitude of the vector times the direction. So vector r goes to magnitude r times r hat. From there, we have to realize that we're at the surface. So we need for the magnitude of r, we need to put in capital R because that's the radius of the sphere at the surface. Then we're just left with the dot product of the unit vectors, which go to 1. Therefore, the surface bound charge, sigma b, is just equal to kr. For the volume bound charge, we have to go back to our notes on the spherical divergence. All we need is the radial component since that's what's given to us. The theta and phi component don't compute here. So the radial component is 1 over r squared, partial with respect to r, times r squared times rho, which in this case is just kr. That simplifies down pretty quick and we're just left with a volume bound charge of negative 3k. For part B, where we're interested in the electric fields, we will use Gauss's law to determine that. For a Gaussian surface inside the sphere, where r is less than big R, the surface integral leads to e times the surface area of a sphere, which is 4 pi r squared. But on the right-hand side for Q enclosed, we have the volume times the volume bound charge. Now with a little bit of algebra, we can solve for the electric field. The 4 pi cancels on both sides. As you see in the line below, the radii ended up canceling and we're left with an expression with the volume bound charge that we just found. So we substitute that in and we see that the threes cancel. Note that the red r and the r hat form the spatial vector r. So in total, we're left with negative k over epsilon naught r for the E field inside. Similarly, for the Gaussian surface outside, where little r is greater than big R, the Q enclosed has to incorporate both the volume bound charge and the surface bound charge. So that's what we see here in the first line. We note that we can factor out a 4 pi r squared from both of the expressions in the numerator, which cancel with the 4 pi r squared on the other side of the equation. Substituting in both the volume and the surface bound charges, we see that they end up canceling to zero. Therefore, the field outside is zero.